community committed to preserving the vast customs of a vibrant cultural heritage. Welcome to Darshan America, folks. We come to you from Washington, D.C. My name is Ramesh Bhutani. And I am Shilpa Alimchandani. Well, this is our second show and first with you, Shilpa. Uh, we are being beamed out nationally in 29 markets. 31 million homes have Darshan television. If they want to watch, they can watch it. Now, remember, we are mostly a must-carry station. In other words, if you've got a television set, you will get us, whether you're using Fios, cable, any kind of a satellite, any kind of cable or digital, you will get us. So please tell your friends because there's nothing like a word of mouth in Indian American community. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really proud of the show and it was really nice to see the article featuring you, Ramesh, and our colleague Asta in the Washington Post recently, all about how this once was a small Indian American TV show that's going across the country. That's right. And folks, by the way, yes, it is on Washington Post. Uh, you can uh, use the word Darshan and it will bring it up. At the same time, I want to thank a number of magazines and the newspapers that have actually gone out of their way to give us the plug that, yes, we are going national. So I thank all of them. And you know, Ramesh, we especially want to thank all of those loyal viewers out there. You've been writing, emailing, giving us wonderful feedback about the national show, giving us ideas about where to take the show going forward. So thank you so much for calling, writing, and uh, watching our show. On to the show itself. Our first story is about Andy Grove. Everybody knows he was the chairman of the Intel, founder of Intel, an immigrant. He came from Hungary and started this business of Intel. Of course, he started from the garage. But one of the things that he says, startups are wonderful, but they don't create employment. He's railing about the unemployment situation in the United States of America with Obama administration stressing that it is important to start new, uh, new startups and he wants to finance them, he wants to fund them and he want, he's asking the Americans to you know, light up the fire on innovation. Andy Grove says, uh-uh, you're not going to create the jobs that way. Manufacturing a television started in the United States of America and then we had something like two million people involved in the manufacturing of television sets. Folks, today we manufacture zero television <laughs> because we feel it's a commodity product so it goes to Vietnam and China and the other places because it's cheaper there. One of the other examples he gives is Apple Company. You know, I mean, Apple is the innovative star. But let's face it, they have only 25,000 employees in the United States. 250,000 and more, which is 10 times, are working for Foxcom that actually makes the iMac and the computers and the tablet and the iPod and the iPad, you know, iPhones. They're the ones who are actually getting bulk of the employment. Well, do you think this is really a quality quantity conversation that the Obama administration might argue, for example, that we're trying to create more high quality jobs. They're competitive, they may be requiring more education, but uh, the manufacturing jobs that you're speaking of that have largely gone overseas are uh, not as advanced and there may be greater numbers of those kinds of jobs, but they don't pay as much and they're not as prestigious. Is, do you think that is the debate? Well, Andy does talk about that. And one of the things he says, well, if you want the country of a high value earners and unemployed the rest of them, well, you have your <laughs> choice. But that's not the way we should move forward. Right here at Dershin, for years and years, I'm the one who's always complaining just because it's cheap does not mean that's what you should buy. You should make sure that it says made in America. If you can afford it, you certainly should do it. And people that I actually blame and I have over the years are the designers. The Polos and the Calvins and the others. What they have done is when we go to purchase something, we see the brand name. And the brand name is American. But it is made in China and Vietnam and the other places. That's not fair. I recommend that make sure that their brand name should say Chinese Polo. 
<laughs> Wait the means polo. You know, so that we, in one glance, can say, this is where it is. You know, the made in China, made in Vietnam, the labels are very small. In the back of it, you really have to stretch <laughs> to see it. I don't know how much difference it would make. People want cheaper goods. They're not willing to spend more money by looking at the label and buying American products. And what about free market? What about global trade? Now all of a sudden you want to protect the U.S. and not trade? It's not. I'm not trying to protect. Yes, we should actually trade with each other. But should be like 80-20. You manufacture stuff, 80% here, 20% outside. Right now we have 80% outside, 20% here. Yeah, there's a high value uh, jobs up here, but they're far and few. And I want to tell you, uh, with so much unemployment, we put Obama administration or anyone else up there for them to think how to come up with these ideas. There are people there, they'll tell you. Andy says that in the olden days, it used to take $1,000, $2,000 to create a job. Now it takes $100,000 to create a job. It's difficult. So folks, North Carolina, South Carolina, they used to make these textiles. You had towels, you had bed sheets, you had underwear. They should all be made in America. There's no reason for all of that to be made in China and Vietnam and the other places. Well, you know, this whole uh, jobs conversation that we're having right now is a big part of the immigration debate. And I was very interested in this New York Times piece about immigration reform around clergy. We're talking about pastors, preachers, rabbis in and around the Houston area that are organizing to actually suggest that immigration reform is a good thing and a path to legalization for illegal immigrants is something that's good for everyone. You don't normally hear this kind of conversation in places of worship, right, about immigration, and especially in communities that are being hit hard economically where people are beginning to resent immigrants saying they're stealing our jobs, we don't trust them, go home, all of this kind of attitude. So in this article, they outline some different religious congregations where a lot of the membership is against immigration reform, but the pastors and the clergymen are having a different tone. For example, there is a uh, black church in which the reverend uh, is quoted as saying this, all 13 colonies were made up of illegal aliens because they had not gotten permission from the residents here, who were the Indians, he said. Then, a few years later, they brought us, meaning African Americans, here and made us illegal too. These immigrants,